Hi, I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. Jack Hayford passed away Sunday morning at the age of 88. His family said he died peacefully in his sleep in the early hours of the morning, having eaten dinner with his wife, Valerie, and having spoken to one of his grandkids the evening before. Pastor Jack, as he was commonly called, was born in Los Angeles in 1934. According to Charisma magazine, he was born with a life-threatening illness and miraculously healed through the prayers of friends and family. Later, he was attacked by polio, and church elders anointed him and prayed for his healing. God granted another miracle. He was raised in Oakland, but he returned to L.A. to attend Life Bible College, a college provided by the Church of the Four Square Gospel. He graduated in 1956 and joined the faculty at Life and eventually became the dean of the students. In 1969, he became the pastor of a small Foursquare church in Van Nuys, California, that eventually became Church on the Way, a mega church with a congregation surpassing 10,000 that he pastored for over 30 years. He then went on to found a Pentecostal school called the King's College and Seminary in 1997, which later became known as the King's University and relocated to the Dallas-Fort Worth area in 2013. Pastor Jack also served for four years as the president of the Church of the Four Square Gospel from 2004 to 2008. He also composed over 500 worship songs, the most well-known being Majesty. His wife of over 60 years, Anna, passed away in 2017. In this video clip, you'll hear Francis Chan describe how hearing Jack Hayford teach the Bible changed his perception about charismatics. And when someone would say a phrase like this charismatic theologian, I just thought that's an oxymoron. There's no charismatic theologians. They don't even study the word. They, they just dream and have visions. I mean, that's really what I believe. So I thought I will protect the church from these people who are getting away from the word of God and just chasing their fantasies. And I've got to save the church from them. So I don't think I was evil. I, 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 I know I was arrogant, like off the charts arrogant, but there was almost this side of me that felt like, God, I'm doing this for you. And what changed me was I was on this board uh, with this guy named Jack Hayford, and um, which I was nervous about and didn't was uncomfortable being on there, but it was for the poor. So as I got to know him and I got to see his character, I thought, oh my gosh, the love he had for people who were attacking him. That's what changed me. I apologized to him. And from that point on, it was like this openness of, man, when he, when Jack started teaching the word of God, that's when it was so humbling. He was using the heap. I mean, I just thought, okay, here we go. What vision did you have today? He got into the word Greek, Hebrew, in a way that was so humbling. And that mixed with his character and love and compassion, it, it really changed this arrogant, uh, I need to fight against all these people. In this message from 2016, he spoke about the gift of speaking in tongues. The original Pentecost was the day the law was given. Here is the day the Spirit was come to bring the law alive in people, and not just something that says, I'll come and not just engrave it on your hearts, but I'll flow it into the whole of your lifestyle and your behavior in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But as the Spirit comes, there are people speaking with tongues. And the speaking with tongues was mocked 
as, these, as a part of these people being drunk, but they were just rejoicing and amazed. And finally, some said, tell us what this means. We're bewildered. And then Peter stood and preached the great sermon that when he finished the sermon, having exalted Jesus, he said, this one who you took and with wicked hands crucified and slew on the cross, that he has ascended to the right hand of God and has poured forth this which you now see and hear. And the first thing that happened when the Holy Spirit came upon them, first thing that happened is they began to speak with tongues. And the main thing you learn about tongues in the Bible is it is a, it is a language of prayer. It's a language of worship. It's a language unknown to the person who is receiving it at the time. But the sense of the Spirit that is present in your life and working in you when it occurs is no mystery to you as to the source. When we come to the matter of the Holy Spirit's being poured out, this beauty and the sanity, even at the beginning, and it was, they were accused of being drunk. There will always be people who will mock the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And if he doesn't mock tongues, he'll mock something else about the work of God. People will persecute, they will criticize, they will make fun of things they don't understand or things they have belligerently set themselves against. And so that is not a hallmark against the baptism of the Holy Spirit or speaking with tongues. It is a very valid part of Spirit-filled living, and it's for everyone. Paul said that, the promise is unto you. What they had seen and heard, he says, the promise is unto you. When they had just beheld this whole thing of the people being filled with the Spirit, he said, you repent, be baptized, and... Uh, in, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and you'll receive the promise of the, the, the fullness of the Spirit, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Pastor Jack finished the race without scandal and without compromising his message or his methods. Stephen Strang from Charisma Magazine called him the Pentecostal gold standard. He was a faithful servant of God who left behind a great legacy and testimony for all of us to follow. He will be missed, but we rejoice in his homegoing. Our sympathies to his friends and family.